we are glad that you're with us this evening. Barb's going to be here for a few minutes and getting passports and information. Um, the most critical piece of information that you need to make sure to take care of is getting your background check info sheet in. Uh, since we are going under the auspices of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod World Missions, that's part of what they require to, uh, of us. So if you can complete that, I know you've probably done background checks before, but this is the one that the information they specifically need to complete there. So uh, if you did one on a previous trip, I think that counts still. Uh, but uh, get that info as soon as possible. Secondly, if your passport is background check, uh, Barb, background check sheets, where are those? She's going to pass those out to us. They were not in the packet that was provided. No problem. She's giving no, background check. No. There was. Was there background? There was a background, but it didn't look like that. No, that's not. This is the background. You've got a special one, John. Barb okay. sent you one. You they gave us some packets one. and they were absent from them. <laughs> Yours is getting done in many different countries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already on file. I mean, you know, it makes it easy. <laughs> the other thing is if you do not have a current passport, an expired passport, a passport that will be expiring within six months. You need to complete that documentation ASAP, particularly with shutdown and furlough. That was not affected. That was not affected. Passports were not affected. But that six month is not from today, that's from the day we leave. Mm -hmm. Six months from the day we leave. And I think Barb was aware that someone who had been on a previous trip, their passport was <laughs> Someone. And, and the challenge we're going to have, um, and it's going to be a big challenge, uh, is we cannot get confirmation on flights until we have all of your passports turned in to the travel agency. We cannot do it. They will not ticket. They will not schedule. And and to make no, sure I, that everyone is pardon, together no, for no, the I trip, do. and to make sure that we're on the same flights and seated relatively close to each other and those kinds of things. So we need all of that information ASAP so that we can complete that. Pastor Short, you have devotion for us? I do. It's a section in 2 Corinthians, two chapters that I think are just one that I just keep going back to, one of my old Bibles that marked up a great deal because it's just a great go-back place for me. There's a section in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 where Paul is talking about sowing generously. We often attach this with money finances. I think it applies to everything. Everything that God has given us, whatever He gives us, we can sow generously with that. Whether it's our skill, our talents, our abilities, our energy, uh, our faith, our grace, all the things that God would lay out for us. And then certainly it does include our money. Uh, but so whatever we are, whatever we have is God's. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things and in all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That's an incredible verse. God supplies us with all that we need in order to do all that He would have us to do and all the ways He would have us to do it. Uh, he has scattered abroad His gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now He who supplies seed to the sower will, uh, and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. The harvest of your righteousness. Part of what you're involved in here is harvesting your righteousness. Your righteousness before God. Your, the, the service that you render and all that you're going to be doing with each other, uh, all the people that we meet and come in contact with and are traveling and certainly the people that we will be a part with and, and can 
connecting with there in, uh, in our work in, in Kenya. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Paul is talking about the us here being others who were with him to come and gather the offerings to take back to Jerusalem. But all of this can apply to everything that God has given us. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. So what we do when we're there will multiply in all kinds of ways. Uh, many, many, many extra things will be given to God. Uh, because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, uh, people will, men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the good news or the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Now, I just think this is a way of, we're not being asked to do anything uh, through all of this whole process as God is, I believe, inviting us, encouraging us, equipping us to be about this work. He's not a asking us to do anything that He's not there to equip us so to do. To give us Himself, to give us His strength, to give us His uh, wherewithal, His grace of service. And as we receive that uh, to ourselves, to be equipped to do that which you would have us to do, it's amazing what we will be able to do outside of ourselves, beyond ourselves, but with God supplying all of it. So we can just kind of be, be that uh, uh, receptive to what God would have us to, to receive. Lord, would you uh, help us to be open as we begin to uh, approach uh, this mission and this ministry uh, a bit of not totally always understanding what is there, particularly for those who have not been before, those who have not been part of a medical mission uh, team. Uh, we pray for your guidance. We pray for your eyes. We pray for uh, your heart uh, to touch our hearts so that we can be who you would have us to be. But Lord, that's going to happen as we're open as you fill us with all that you are so that we can be who you would have us to be with all of the blessings and the graces and everything that you would have us to have, all of those things uh, because of your incredible love. We thank you for this incredible opportunity that's before us. We just pray that you will uh, raise us up uh, to the challenges that will be there uh, as you come to fill us with your love, your peace, in your incredible grace. It's in your uh, precious name, Lord Jesus, we continue. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Who would like to do our brief devotion at the beginning of the next training meeting? Who's ready to volunteer to step up to do that? Jeff, thank you. Barb, do you remember when we're meeting next? Do you have on schedule anybody? 28. 28th. <clears throat> That's uh, October 28th. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> That's uh, Monday. And, uh, it will we'll be in David and Solomon. David and Solomon downstairs. We won't be in the same room. There are a lot of meetings going on, and we'll flip flop around this. You know, there are a thousand details to take care of with regard to a trip like this. And we need to take care of all of them, but we don't have to do all of them tonight. So, Mike, <laughs> I would like us to finish in about 45 to 50 minutes. What that means is you have to give me permission to, to ride herd a little bit on us, if that would be all right. We're going to have plenty of time to answer a number of things. And uh, uh, would you mind if I might be our timekeeper and get you. We could spend the whole evening here, but I think it's best to do this in chunks at a time. 
Could be alright with everybody? John and I object. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we change the name of this. We're going to object to this. To KM squared 14 instead of Kenya Medical Mission Trip 2014. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do, make sure you've got one of our immunization cards and get those taken care of. We have invited Dr. B an old physician from St. Louis who has been down for the last two teams on a Saturday given lots of shots and his wife who is a nurse comes with him and they help lots of teams get ready for medical missions <laughs> and they give a wealth of information about specific to the country and the region that we're going. We will try to arrange that and let you know. I think they have given yellow fever shots, which are a difficult one. There are only a few people authorized to, to give those and, and done a number of that. Would you like us to arrange one of those Saturdays to, to do the yellow fever? I'm sorry? Does he in fact do the yellow fever, Dr. B? Didn't he do pills the last time for yellow fever? I don't think so. Uh, that's right. I could be extremely wrong about this, but I think we have to go to We may have to, to. There are some so information. Did they? For yellow fever? Okay. You did got, yellow fever before, didn't you? Yeah. I got all my shots either at, at County Health here or with his group. Dr. Beagle? Yeah. Good. I did not go to Sykes. So note that, and we'll have some more. You received a reading list. Uh, one of the things, Shao and Trump, the missionary there, every time we've had a team there, he has spoken to each of our teams about the fact that they arrive in country ready to serve. Uh, these are the things he asks us to read so that we can be great servants and great partners in their mission in Kenya. He said there will be other groups that arrive for 10 or 12 days and they may spend the first three days with him in training because they've not done that kind of reading. They've not thought about how to effectively serve and communicate the, the gospel in that culture. So uh, the reading is worthwhile uh, and, and it takes a while. So start plowing through that, sharing books, uh, don't grab one and not read it because that's blocking from somebody else from reading it. So get them, return them. Uh, and I know some of you are buying some of those copies on Amazon. And if you've got one and want to <coughs> add it to our list for others, uh, we welcome you to do that. But our missionary there speaks highly of every team from St. Andrew that comes. In fact, our last team that was there, I think you did about 30 minutes of orientation then headed uh, and, it, and it simply says he trusts the folks coming from St. Andrew because they've done that reading ahead of time. Uh, applications and paperwork, you've got anything that you need us to get in. Background checks, passports, ASAP. Okay. Get those to him as quickly as you can. Clark? You need us, or can we let you go home? Barb, we appreciate the details you take care of for us. Thank you, Barb. Okay. Welcome. Barb said our snacks have two. <laughs> here's, here's what I need you to do. I need you to share your name and briefly. Now, there's a number of us, and we could make take up more than the uh, 50, 45 minutes we have remaining with this exercise. So you got to, you, you can't be long and wordy. But tell briefly why you sense God calling you to, to this trip. I'm Jim Hicks from our staff. God's not calling me to go on this trip. <laughs> One of the privileges that I've had is to help our teams get ready. And I will travel vicariously through you and enjoy the opportunity of helping them. Uh, you be ready for your ministry there. So thank you for letting me share your preparation for a marvelous adventure. Who's next? I go. I'm Don Cowan. Uh, I went on the last trip, and I think I told John this. Um, I think the reason I'm going is I felt incomplete from the last trip. I felt I hadn't done enough. 
and that's that's what's driven me back to this table. Uh, I'm Bob Moore, and uh, let me this down because it was actually would have been actually kind of long. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, you need uh, to do a devotion and tell us your long version. I, that. Well, that's a possible. Uh, I had met with Pastor Mark after taking the <coughs> ministry class, and which my lowest score, by the way, was in missions. <laughs> so here I am. Figures. But uh, you're not uh, the first person. That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> but uh, he said we were talking about things uh, that uh, maybe that I felt called to do or whatever to do, and he said, have you ever considered a mission trip? I said, well, actually, yeah, I did, but I said, after scoring so low on missions, I thought maybe it wasn't a good idea, and he suggested the mission trip. Uh, I went on and prayed about it, and it was like the feeling I got was just like, you go, and that's why I'm here. I'm Blair Gill. Um, I uh, have been barely two months with this church, but uh, the the day Matilda and I walked in here, uh, uh, we felt um, it was home. I mean, uh, uh, people, Jim, uh, everybody was just so so welcoming. Um, uh, and uh, we, for what reasons, uh, left the church. We were in because mainly for our, our daughter to give her a, a, a better environment. Um, but uh, St. Andrew was the ninth church in town. Um, and it was the only one where we felt, and nothing, nothing against all the others, but we felt home. So uh, I grew up uh, MK. My dad was a missionary doctor in India. My first 10 years were in India. Um, and uh, I've respected him for, for what he has done there. And, um, uh, and I've always wanted to go over and I want to take um, my daughter and my stepson um, uh, overseas sometime to show them how, how lucky we are here. We are so blessed, um, even when everything's messed up in the government. <laughs> um, my name's Lee Beckwith, and um, I, I guess I'm going just because it's God's work and um, I think that God has things for us to do. John Daney, I'm going because Pastor Short told me I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love um, work overseas, so it's just, it's just like that. Wasn't hard, was it? No, it wasn't hard to <laughs> Not a hard assignment. I am Paula Stork. Um, truthfully, I'm still trying to decide if I'm going. Um, when I first heard of the trip from Diane Downey, my, my spirit warmed intensely to the idea. So I do believe the Lord wants me there. Um, my husband told me last night, don't think of anything but what God would have you do over there and the help that you can give the people. And my spirit responds greatly to that, so I will know soon. Please don't talk to Diane about me. <laughs> I already have. We were, we were roommates. <laughs> I'm Seth Whitmer. I'm a nurse, and this is my third trip to Africa. I like really hard stuff. I like sitting in the sun for 10 hours at 93 degrees and then going to bed at night, dropping dead in bed. I like hard stuff. Um, my name is Jason Lee. I'm the next to the newest member. Uh, and as uh, he, I'm sorry, Blair. Blair has indicated. He pretty much said some of the same words I was thinking. We, uh, me and my wife, my family showed up here at St. Andrews after visiting quite a few churches, um, and uh, we fell in love with you guys. And uh, was overwhelmed with how comfortable you made us feel when we got here. And we just uh, knew this was the place for us. So uh, 
for the Kenya trip, um, this was something so far off that I never seen coming years, miles, probably forever away. Uh, my wife um, apparently was doing some, some work behind the scenes that I was unaware of. <laughs> and uh, so I, she was the last person I ever would have thought to be doing this. Um, she has a hard enough time when I leave uh, for training for a week um, or, or actually a few days. So uh, for her to think it's okay for me to go overseas, uh, that was a big deal. Uh, but personally, I've always wanted to do something like this. Um, you know, I've heard about this stuff and thought, man, I, I could really, uh, really hope, well, I feel, I feel like I could be some good there, you know, with God's help um, through me. And uh, I feel comfortable when uh, I found out I was going and, or, and my wife said, I want you to go. I said, Oh, I thought you were going to be the biggest obstacle. <laughs> so uh, personally, I'm just overwhelmed and uh, feel very blessed. You know, I'm so excited and, and uh, overjoyed you, than you, you'll ever believe uh, to know. So I just, I'm excited. Thank you. Hope to do some good with everybody. Keep going. I need to step out. Okay. Uh, I'm Jeff Anger. Uh, I've had the uh, good fortune to be there twice before. And and um, had the opportunity to come this time and found out it was a medical mission trip and it just fit perfect and I'm just really excited. It's some, some amazing people and it's amazing work and I just happy to be a part of it. Jeff, be honest. Paul told you you were going. Yeah. <laughs> God's voice sounds a lot like my wife's in Pastor Short. <laughs> Just um, Oh, the reason that we're going to Kenya as, as St. Andrew is pretty serendipitous, which some of you will hear that story maybe later. There's no sense in going into that now. But it's amazing how what God has used to lead us to this mission field out of all the others. And Jeff was on the first trip with me in which we traveled with Shawan and some other church leaders in Kenya. Uh, and use that traveling and those visits to determine where we would go and how that would all function. And, and we could have chosen numerous other ministries and places in Kenya, but we chose this. We felt like we were actually directed to this. Uh, and uh, so that's, we're, we're continuing to respond to what I believe was, was God directing us on that first trip and working there in Shaman's office and going through all the 10 or 12 places we had visited and, and it, this came out, this is where we're going. So uh, it's, and, and I think that we have seen the, uh, the blessings of that service. We go back, it's long-term commitment, short-term mission trips. So when you do that, you go back to the same place, working with the same church leaders as partners. So you develop a relationship, you develop a ministry with those people, not, not for them, but with them. And uh, that's a key phrase that Pastor Trump wants us to learn, and, and uh, uh, I've been coached on that heard quite well from Pastor Trump, because uh, I got it wrong the first time. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Paula, if God leads you to say yes, he, he will bless you with this group of folks and the opportunity to serve. The thing that I recall most from my privileged opportunity uh, to, to, to serve alongside Christians in Kenya, walking beside them as they ministered to their communities was uh, how I was inspired and strengthened uh, by the Christian witness they gave to me. It is humbling to be with folks who live so modestly and have their priorities in such good order that uh, it is inspiring and transforming. And uh, so uh, uh, as, as we go to serve our Savior, uh, we in turn uh, are served by it and come back uh, with a deeper walk uh, and a deeper understanding of the love that God has for us in Jesus Christ as it gets expressed in such marvelous ways among passionate Christians, African Christians that we're privileged to work alongside and help them in their ministry to their communities. So, 
uh, meet need opportunity. Need you to do something real quickly. I'm going to give you about two minutes. You need to write in ten words or less. What's the role of a short-term missionary? Do it quick, off the top of your head. Pastor Short, if I can ask you to help me with an item while they're doing that. I'm giving them another assignment. They've done this before. Got about another minute just to write quickly. What's the role of a short-term missionary? No, that's all right. We got we, we got enough there. <laughs> if we get this wrong, we can't go. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> But you do get a poorer seat on the airplane if you don't get that. You get the seat by the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What's wrong with that? Doesn't that? Yeah. <laughs> Are we helping him with what he needs? I don't know. I haven't had a chance to visit with him. Oh, that I just that asked him. him. Okay. Yeah. That I was, I was looking for. We'll send you an Ethiopian air. <laughs> Smallest airline seats in the industry. <laughs> Most narrow ones. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is this like the doctor's side here? Is that going to help? <laughs> I just sat down because I knew Lee. Uh, you can pass those in to us. You will find out I harass everyone. <laughs> I'm perfect. <now. laughs> sure. John discovered that about three and a half minutes after he got to the church. What's that? Did I pick on everyone? I thought that was that at all. You pick on people? <laughs> Here, here's what the stuff. To be the light of Christ, joy, acceptance, humility, touch. To go where the Holy Spirit leads. To express God's love for us by allowing us to show our Christian love for others. To take God's word and Jesus' love to others. To partner with fellow Christians. To exemplify Jesus in my actions and work to show compassion. To serve the people of God and promote the gospel. To walk besides the local church along the way. Love God, love others. And that may be love God, love others, walk beside the local church along the way. To glorify God, to share God's love, to bring people into the kingdom to show and express God's love to anyone through our words and actions. You know, it's that simple of going where Jesus calls, uh, sharing his love, partnering with Christians to help them in their ministry among their communities. Uh, lots of common themes that we're, we're seeing and expressing. One of the things that we've discussed, that we've used as a tool because we're going through the auspice of the Lutheran Church Missouri Center of World Missions is they ask us to do some, they provide some mission training. There's a series of six little videos that have some uh, information and vignettes in it. And if you can turn that light out and turn the, that those on, they're not very long. Uh, 
those of us, you know, I found this beneficial as I was getting ready to go to Kenya the first time. I found it after having been to Kenya. Uh, I looked at it and said, you know, they're exactly on target. These really are very, very helpful. For those who have been and seen some of this before, uh, I should have turned that on soon. There it is. We're getting ready to go. Not lengthy, but uh, just some great, great reminders for us of uh, some information. If you find lesson one in your book, there's a place to take some notes uh, that you can follow. What page is that on? Uh, session one, role and identity, about page three. Andy Miller. Serving as a short-term missionary is an extraordinary call to answer. You'll grow spiritually and serve in a real and valuable way. You'll see and experience life in a foreign mission field. It's a unique opportunity to live for a short time in a culture different from your own. An important step in your journey is this training. There's a great benefit in getting together with your team to go through this material. It's a chance to get to know each other better before you travel, live, and work together. You'll learn about topics from the practical to the spiritual. You'll learn what to expect and how to handle the unexpected. And you'll hear about the importance of being flexible. Devotions, discussions, and activities are also part of this training. Now to get the most from this training, be open-minded and make sure you participate. We're happy and excited to have you serve in the mission field. Let's begin with our first topic. three important roles as a short-term missionary. You're a learner, a servant, and a guest. Let's first explore what each of these roles mean. Here's a question for you. Where can you find the most Lutherans? North America, Africa, Europe? You might be surprised to learn the answer is Africa. Many African countries have a thriving and growing church. Working as a short-term missionary gives you the opportunity to learn about the life of a Lutheran church in another part of the world. You'll probably be surprised about how much there is to learn about the Christian community worldwide. For example, in West Africa, it's common to dance while bringing offerings, and sometimes the worship service may last as long as four hours. You'll learn a lot by seeing what nationals and overseas missionaries face on a day-to-day -day basis. You're there for only a few weeks, so you won't become an expert, but you will be able to see the joys, frustrations, and challenges that these missionaries experience. In almost every country, you'll find a much lower standard of living than here in the U.S. After living there for a few weeks, you'll better appreciate the work of those who are sharing a message of hope, especially in the less developed nations. We had a, a volunteer missionary team come out, and they started a, a Sunday school program for children. They ran seminars, they trained people within the church and provided material. And here we are five or six years after they came, but the Sunday school programs are still there. Now, this is a good example of how volunteer missionaries have uh, impacted the lives of thousands of people. And, uh, I mean, that's about as missionary as you can get. In your role as a servant, you may teach English, help with vacation Bible school, or coach kids in sports. As you approach your work, Think of this verse from Ephesians. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men. Whatever you are tasked with, this help has been requested by the mission field. You may not see the value of what you're doing at first, but as you continue working, you'll see how it fits into the overall purpose of that mission. Now your role as a guest. This role may sound easy, but really think about what you need to do to be a good guest. 
you'll need to be humble and respectful of the local population. You're going on your trip to help the missionaries. You're not there to critique the mission plan and to tell the missionaries how to do their jobs. Remember, you're just one small part of a long-term mission effort. John, if you can get the lights on for us, and if you can turn in your booklet, uh, I think that's page four. Real quickly, about eight statements. Pick out if that's your role as a guest, a servant, or a learner. <clears throat> Go through those and do those real quickly for yourself. You conduct a Bible study for a group of teenagers. Your role is? Sure. Sure. The bathrooms are so different. Yuck. Yes. 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 And learner. And learner. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are their bathrooms like? Squat toilets. Because I was, I was in Russia. They, they have a number of western toilets, often without seats. Where we stay, we'll typically have western toilets, and mm -hmm. where we stay at night, mm -hmm. and out in the field, it can be very rugged. Yeah, my standard now is I go to a restroom, I go, oh, I used to to Africa, I can manage this. Until <laughs> we went to Alabama, I yeah. <laughs> found one that, oh, I didn't go to anything. <laughs> 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 I think that was in Mississippi where we got gas that one. Uh, and, and recognizing you're a guest and folks are providing the best of what they have changes the way that you, you know, recognizing we're a guest and they're going to do their absolute best for us. During services, you sit in an area for men or women. Yes. And learn. And at dinner, everyone is eating out of the same bowl, using their hands. But you're also a guest following their customs. Fortunately, everywhere I went in Kenya, they gave me a spoon. Though sometimes some of their foods they ate with fingers. But not out of common bowls. Not out of common bowls. No. While coaching kids, a Muslim child stops for prayers. Every day around 2 p.m., everyone takes a short nap. Yeah. Wish we could learn that. Are <laughs> <laughs> uh, we going to Spain? <laughs> uh, Kenyans eat uh, chakula chakula chanchana, a meal in the mid-afternoon. So they eat breakfast, a very modest breakfast, uh, in the villages that would be typically uh, their tea, chai, with sugar, raw sugar. They don't eat till about 3 in the afternoon. And then it's a big meal they serve. Oh, and they eat. But that's their real, their meal of the day, and everything else around it is small. So, uh, all women, including Christians, cover their heads with scarves. No, yeah, we didn't. Shoulders. Where we're going, they 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 do not wear bare shoulders. Yeah, ankles. Ankle length. Probably. We're going to a area that is predominantly Muslim. And the villages where I'm assuming you will serve is women wear long dresses, 
sleeve high collars. Uh, and and, uh, and men wear long pants and shirts with collars. Shirts with collars. Mm -hmm. You've been invited to sing with the choir. Sure. And a guest. Yes. All sorts of, and it's important for us to keep those. We're not just going there to serve. We're going there to learn from them. I learned a great deal, uh, and we're going as the guest to partner alongside the, the, the folks that are there. Uh, and. Uh, you know, we did a trip to Vredenburg, to, uh, and in many ways, the culture in South Alabama in a rural poor area was almost as different from the culture in Cape Girardeau as it was in Kenya. I think it's closer to what goes on in Kenya than Cape Girardeau, <laughs> personally. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, some, some interesting, let's do a look at, look at the next <coughs> thing they have to say here. Trip, I think you want to leave a good impression. Uh, so many cultures, you know, they lump all Christians together, you know, and if they've had a bad experience, they seem to focus on that bad experience. If we do things that are wrong, you know, that are culturally wrong, you know, then they're hesitant about bringing us back in, they're hesitant about welcoming us into their family and sharing the Word of God. Now that we've identified the three roles, let's talk about how you can successfully apply these roles. First, always approach what you say and do with the thought that you're in the mission field to glorify God. An attitude of service and humility goes a long way. With this attitude, people will feel that you're there to help and serve them rather than to advance your own agenda. Your words and actions make a statement. By being flexible and showing respect, you'll find opportunities to witness your faith. So an important key to success is flexibility. Expect the unexpected. Things don't always happen the way you imagine. Plans, schedules, even your original task could change. But don't let a change of plan or the stress it causes interfere with your experience. Sometimes that's when the best things happen. You should have a spiritual understanding that if something changes, it happened for a reason. Another important element to success is respect. You need to show respect at all times and in all situations. Show respect for the church life at the mission, which is probably different from your home church. Don't think what you do at home will work in another country. Also, keep in mind the church is already established. You're not there to change it. Your work will help expand and enlarge its mission. Respect how things are done and work within the context of the culture. Avoid snap judgments. Don't disagree with what you may not fully understand. Serving as a short-term missionary will be an exciting, valuable experience. Be ready to learn. Be a humble servant and a gracious guest. Be flexible and at all times show respect for the people and the church. The more you give, the more you'll receive. <laughs> things that we clearly, you'll hear this from Shawin, you'll note it from your reading, you'll hear it from uh, uh, those of us who have been privileged to go before, is we really go at the request of the indigenous church. We go at the request of the Kenyan Evangelical Lutheran Church. And our philosophy then with them is you went, you and Jeff went the first time and viewed the mission sites <coughs> as where do you want us to serve with you? And uh, they were a bit taken aback by that question because typically Western churches come saying, here's what we're going to come and do for you. Uh, and, and we phrased it, the wisdom of our leaders, to say, what would you like us to do? And every time we go, we go providing ministry as they see would be valuable to their region, 
to the area they're serving. So we've gone to do a children's program, we've done a medical mission, we've done some renovation and agricultural work, always as part of what those churches see as ways of them more effectively reaching their communities with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so uh, we really go uh, at their request to come alongside you know, they've been successfully doing ministry and living successfully in a very difficult uh, uh, climate with meager resources and doing that successfully for a long time. And so we come uh, and, uh, and partner alongside them. Uh, and uh, uh, the last thing we're going to look at, uh, we're going to look at anybody here journal regularly? Anybody journaled on a mission trip successfully? You know. I journal, I don't journal well, but I journaled on my, I journaled about eight of the 12 days we were in Africa, and they were simple notes, but I can still, that journal takes me back to those days. The four days I didn't journal, I don't have a clue why I did. Uh, that's a practice skill, and uh, listen to their recommendations, and then I'm going to direct you some places you need to get them. When you serve as a short-term missionary, you'll also be on a spiritual journey. You'll learn and grow in ways that you can't even imagine. God will use this trip to work in your life. Let's talk about two vital parts of this journey. One is getting together every day with your team to share your experiences. Another is taking personal time for prayer and reflection. Both contribute to the success of your team and your trip. Set aside time to meet every day as a team. Select a time and then adjust as needed. Don't think of the meeting as another task to check off a list. It's really important and healthy to get together and talk about your experiences. Meeting daily helps everyone stay in tune with each other. It's good to hear what other members of your group are learning from their trip, and it helps to prevent any issues or concerns from escalating. But don't let this become a time to complain. It's a time to build each other up. After addressing any concerns, the team should move on. Keep in mind these words from Ephesians. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. Your daily meetings should also include a devotion. This is usually a scripture reading, a short devotion, and prayer. However, the exact structure will need to fit your team and your trip. Prepare for this before you go. In your manual is a suggested list of resources. Reading in Philippians, we can see the importance of daily devotions. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You may find that you can coordinate this daily devotion with a local service. If you can, that's great. But make sure you still make time for your team to debrief and talk. Every day you should also set aside time for personal reflection, journaling, and prayer. Each of you will do this in your own way and at the time of day that's best for you. Think of this verse from Matthew. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Journaling can be a really important part of your spiritual journey. Write down what you did as well as your feelings and thoughts. This will help you sort through your day's experiences. And it also serves as a valuable record of your trip. Start journaling before you go. Write down your expectations of the trip or what you learned from these training sessions. If writing down your thoughts is new to you, this will give you some time to practice and make you more comfortable with journaling. Your trip will include excitement and frustrations. You'll have things to celebrate and no doubt events that will make you pause and reflect. So remember, meet every day and set aside time for journaling and prayer. These are important steps on your spiritual journey. And may God bless you and your team as you go together on your mission trip.
best journal I've seen of our travels. I saw the, the lengthy notes that you took uh, on your first trip. That was my job. <laughs> You, you know, I think you do it naturally. <laughs> that uh, if you turn in the back of your manual, and if you've gone before, you probably need to get a new one unless you want to. If you look, there is a place that calls personal devotions and journaling, and the pages aren't numbered, so it's a little difficult. But find the personal devotions and journaling. The first one is uh, called Session One Role and Identity. As the follow-up to tonight, I would encourage you to do that little brief Bible study. Everybody, if you didn't find it, help each other find that in your, your manual. There will be a session one. Now flip, probably go back. There it is, right past training. Role and identity. Maybe mine looks a little different than yours. If you go to page 62 and oh. then go a couple pages beyond, you'll be there. 62 and beyond, thank you. <coughs> but it looks like uh, doing... Oh, person. Here. Yeah. Turn a page past it. Okay. Session one, based on tonight. It's simply some passages to read, some questions to answer, and it's a way of beginning that journal now, even through our preparation. Now there is a journal entry for each of the lessons that we have before we go. And I would encourage you uh, to do those. It, it will help you think about what we've talked about. It will give you some prayer thoughts as you're thinking about this trip and uh, will help you be better prepared when you journey there. How many, who here has begun their reading for this trip? I'm going to ask for just brief, what have you caught from the reading? Things that have struck you, brief statements. Well, I read the Eyes Wide Open book. I just finished it. Uh, and uh, the thing that, that struck me most, I think, was, was how much you need to change a Western mindset uh, <laughs> for, for interactions with They see the world differently than we do, out of a different lens of experience and a different set of values, and we need to recognize that uh, and, and to honor it and, 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 and to, to be ready for that. What else? Who else did some reading? John, what struck you? Which one have you been reading? Um, well, in the past, I have read Cultural Intelligence, When Helping Hurts, and what um, Talks to Charity, I guess, that's the list. But um, I, I think all of them, I would sum up in the word that she used on the video, and that's humility, of realizing that I think all of us are born or enculturated, maybe is a better way of saying it, with this notion somehow that America's got their stuff together and the rest of the world is backwards. And oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> and from either angle, by the way. Um, so just that humility of realizing that just because they do it different doesn't mean they do it wrong. It's just different. Who else did some reading? Things that were striking for you who've been on trips before and the reading you've done? I just really remember reading several, I don't remember which book was which, and I didn't read all of them, I would have been. But reading the things of truly striking home, not doing for, doing with. God working through me. As a Bible study just a little bit ago tonight said, God could fix anything and he wanted to. Without our help. He doesn't need our help. But working through us is what we're doing. He's working through us. And I don't know which of the books it was, but to me that message kept coming up over. It comes very close to that coming with humility. That we don't come with all the answers. We're not the They've been successfully surviving as a culture in, very, in, a, in a much harsher, with fewer natural resources, and they've been surviving successfully. Uh, and we need to honor that and uh, 
but they've also invited us to come alongside because we can be very helpful to them. That that come alongside. I think it's toxic charity, but I wouldn't I wouldn't. Um, the, the the scene is simply uh, a guy who's been in in in, in a um, very poor community for a number of years. He's sitting on the stoop talking to someone, and here comes a, a white van, uh, as we were in in Brandenburg, uh, <laughs> and the guy looks at, at them and says something derogatory about, about them. And, but the guy had been there for a while. He didn't say anything then. He waited till later in the day, and he said, help me understand why you said what you did. And the essence of what the man said was, it's not that I don't appreciate what they're trying to do, but it diminishes me as a man. And that's the essence of walking alongside and being partnership, at least in my mind. The reading's worth doing. The reading is very, very valuable. And because our groups do the reading and have some sensitivity, we'll get to serve in the field longer. Groups that come without people having been thoughtful, without having done this, they just kind of show up. Yeah. We'll spend two or three days not serving, but learning how best to serve. So we encourage you to do that. One of the things I just is say one more thing. I think what I had to learn was that, and I'm probably still in learning it, our presence there with the people will have greater impact than anything we will do with those people or for them. Just our being there with them. So when we take that posture of being there with them, not to lord it over them and to be there for them and your eye, but we're just with them, our presence has such an incredible impact. They're honored by our presence to be with them, and the community around them that sees us with them is highly impacted, and it gives, it gives great uh, witness to the witnessing of that church community to the greater community when they see us white folks there. It's yeah. like, how did that happen? You know, who are, wow, there must be something there, and with. The influx that we will have of the uh, scores and scores of people for the medical mission, it'll be highly impactful, but just our presence there. So those of us that are concerned about, I can't do anything, I don't know anything, just being there with them and honoring them and, and being open to who they are will far, I mean, God will use that in ways that you will not be able to understand. Don asked the question last time, wouldn't it be just better for us to send in this money? And Irene, the, mm. the Christian from Kenya who lives here, and the Pope people there say, no, <clears throat> your coming, uh, your coming brings uh, honor to us. Mm -hmm. The way that you treat us uh, as, as partners brings uh, a great witness and we can be more influential in our community when you stand beside us. Because you asked that question. Why don't we just send the money? Wouldn't that do more good? Well, I, you know, I thought we would get more bang for our buck, right? <laughs> and it's a different kind of bang. When I got there the second time, I hadn't even done a thing. And this lady said, Seth, you came back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suspect it, it boils down to uh, three things that uh, Pastor Short said on October 6th. Um, loving God, um, loving others, and being a disciple. Uh, and if we go over there and truly treat them uh, with love the way that we would want to be treated, if we were in that exact same situation too. And we need to practice that with each other before we go. It's part of the value of meeting so that uh, we don't go as strangers. We go as fellow committed Christians who love each other, who love the Lord, and, and serve. I mean, just on that because I think he was really recently said something about, you know, it's our money that helped a lot. But it was 
It's a combination of both. We saw an impact at that last medical mission, average of 500 people a day. They didn't come to see us white folks that were there. They truly came because we, the church body, provided the medications that they wanted. Absolutely. So don't, that money was mm -hmm. valuable. Absolutely. The turnaround with it is the impact we made in addition to mm -hmm. the money being oh, there. Oh, absolutely. But it, it yeah. you know. And the medical missions are a slightly different kind of service. You know, it's, a, you, it's something that is scarce there and it is extremely valuable. Is, I do to finish up with it. I will say it was halfway through the trip, and the last two years since I've been home, that that made the biggest impact for me. Because then, while I was there, especially the first couple of times, I was like, "Well, what do you mean we're just the bait? We're doing a whole lot of good right here. They're <laughs> calling us the bait. We're working just <laughs> I didn't know it well the first time. I said, "What?" <laughs> but if halfway through, it's like, you know what? I'm okay being the bait. <laughs> Because that's truly what it was more about, is every one of those people, yes, they took home Tyler, no, they took home antibiotics for everyone in their family, for every, da, da, unlabeled, of course, but that's another <laughs> issue. <laughs> but more than that, every one of those 500 people that we saw were witness to. Absolutely. Whether it be every person that walked into that room, Dr. Sparkman saying, did you know that Jesus loves you? <laughs> and, and so, yeah, yeah, money is, and it's, you can't throw it away. The money is important. Well, Don's saying, would it be just better to send the money over to let their docs do the work, and they do it cheaper than and spend, and spending and the money on the travel? Way. It was, but uh, thank you for your considering and your desire to, to be a part of this. We've run out of time. We do need to address one thing: is the question of safe travel. You know, we. One of the things that Pastor Short will say more, but Shao and Trump, our missionary there, and the folks in LCMS World Missions will tell us if it's not safe to go at the time. Uh, that, and it is our intent to purchase travel guard for this trip so that should there be something that occur that prevents someone on the team or all of the team from going, that we can recoup the money, at least the money that we've invested. Just picking up with the insurance, uh, you will be way overly insured there. You will have your own insurance coverage that covers you in whatever and ways. Your personal physicians are going with you. Mm -hmm. yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you have your medical cards with you, and, and if you need to call and see if there are local providers over there, uh, certainly do that. Um, you will have insurance at uh, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod uh, for all of the commission workers provides. Uh, then you will have, we will have uh, travel guard insurance through our travel agency that will be any excuse, any reason coverage, which is pretty expensive, but in light of the concerns and just situations that can happen almost at last minute. Uh, it won't we, be nearly as expensive for Jason as it is for some others on the team. We, <laughs> we will have that. So there will be the the purpose of the overly insurance is to cover all of the exclusions that each policy does have. What Senate has has exclusions. What uh, your own medical stuff will have, it'll have exclusions. And so we try to cover as many exclusions as we can with overly in insurance. Um, so it's just something that seems to have served us well. Um, Pastor Trump and, and his whole team in Kenya, working out of Nairobi, are very conscientious for our safety and the safety of all the team that come over. Uh, and, and he will uh, be very watchful of that. The other thing that, my, that I found out incidentally on our last trip my son, Justin, is a major in the Air Force and has worked in Homeland Security for the state of Illinois in the military and is a, is a kind of a terrorism geek kind of thing in, in Illinois. And he's always concerned about his mother and I doing these trips. Can't you go to just kind of a resort? And, uh, and uh, so he kind of does his own detective work and calls state departments and 
I gave him a contact name, uh, Jennifer, when Jennifer Prophet was still at Synod. And uh, he said, I'm going to check into that. And what he found out is that there is someone whose only responsibility at Synod and World Missions is to keep track of all mission workers who are traveling anywhere out of country. Keeps track of those people and knows their, knows their whereabouts and evidently has all the embassy numbers and all those kinds of things. Justin said, I talked to that person, no problem. Go with my blessing. I know who to call if there's an issue, and they know who to call if there's an issue. And uh, so I did not know that. Uh, I, and, uh, I don't know that that's made widely known, but we have a person watching over us. And they will know when we leave, they will know when we return, and uh, that, that will be good. So I want you to know that. So. The other thing, I tell a funny story, is when I went to Kenya, uh, you know, we went with Shaolin, and they took us to only places where it was very, very safe. And, and never once did I feel insecure or threatened in any way. Uh, and they were, I was walking streets of a, a little town by myself, and several of us were walking through some mighty, uh, a beach town that's uh, African, it's not a resort community uh, of great size. Becky and I went on vacation immediately. We were, out, we were traveling back and stopped in uh, Shamrock, Texas. And apparently, we pulled into the wrong McDonald's <laughs> late at night on a Sunday evening. And, and, and I'm thinking, you know, and we go in and we were going to eat there instead of small enough for the hotel room with burgers and fries late at night. And we ordered our food and we thought, we're going to go to the hotel and eat this. You know, I, I felt more threatened late at night in a small Texas town. I mean, there was pretty, pretty much true of any But the poor will always be with <laughs> Some people have trouble with it. <laughs> but it was striking. I thought, never once did I feel this intimidated the whole time I was in Kenya. And uh, I, mean, I think there were gangbangers and rivals, and we, we hightailed it out of there. And, uh, and I thought, eh, you know. Uh, there are places in St. Louis where we shouldn't go, daytime or particularly nighttime, that could be very dangerous. And I'm sure the same is true of places in Kenya. Uh, the key is to to go with somebody who knows where to keep it safe. Can, uh, we, I, can I say something about too? I, in, along with that, and I won't talk long, but when, when I went there the first time, we're, we're, we're looking for places where we're going to go, and we're looking out for the future uh, mission groups that are going to be coming. And it, it, it's odd. I mean, you're just, you just you stick out. You're odd. You feel, you feel out of place. It's, it's not a comfortable thing because I've never been anything like that in my entire life. And I was made to feel comfortable. I never felt that I was in danger or anything. But I asked somebody, I said, I've got to ask you a question. I said, people are going to come behind me, and I want to know, are they safe? And the guy looked at me with the most incredulous eyes seen. Oh, Jeff, nothing would ever happen to you. Nothing would ever happen to a group of people that you send over. You, you don't realize how much we appreciate you being here, and you don't appreciate how much we would take care of you. Nothing will happen to you. And I, it was an amazing feeling after that. I mean, I, again, I never felt in danger, but that piece of, I, don't worry. Are we staying in, uh, do we determine whether we're staying in the same place we did last night? We have not, that has not been determined. It's time to get you home. Can I wrap this up with prayer? We meet on the 28th, somewhere downstairs. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're excited about the privilege of uh, serving uh, alongside our fellow Christians in Kenya. We ask that you would bless this uh, team and the folks that are considering being a part of it and uh, remove any obstacles that might prevent them from joining us. So that you may be served in the kingdom of God. We trust in you and pray this in Jesus' name.